Today I'm going to be talking to you about Summa Silver. Uh, of course, I will be making some forward-looking statements. Uh, and if you care to read this, it's on our website for anyone to read at their convenience. But, but to get started, Summa Silver is a company that I founded uh, in 2020 with the idea of looking at these historic, prolifically producing, high-grade American silver districts that in their time were these wild west places that really helped shape those days of the American West, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s, you know, that we see all the movies about and all of this, but haven't seen uh, much or any modern exploration. Uh, and if you don't know me, it becomes pretty apparent pr pretty quickly that I'm a geologist uh, going back about 15 years. And, and really my focus is looking in these places that may be data rich, that are underexplored because you find that there's always uh, low-hanging fruit. Uh, so since getting started, we've been diligently drilling away on our projects. One is in Nevada uh, and the other is in New Mexico. Uh, and have having, been, been having some very, very strong results on both projects. And we're in the stage now of wrapping our arms around what could be remaining on both. So before I talk about the projects, uh, I'll run through the capital structure of the company. We've got 104 uh, and change million shares outstanding, uh, 123 million fully diluted, trading at about uh, 44 cents today, I believe we closed that. Uh, but, but we're in a, a really good position in that, you know, we've got $5 million in working cap um, that we've uh, been deploying and are deploying onto these projects, really with the idea of showing a path, I think, to what I think could be 100 million ounces uh, on both of our projects. You see, our stock price generally you know, trades between in the last year, say, a dollar and where we're at now, a little under 50 cents. Uh, and then whenever we see the, the markets come back a little bit, especially in silver, and we typically see good leverage to that. In November, we had you know, a little bit of a good month in November, and our stock went from 40 cents to 60 cents. So uh, the last thing I'll mention on this slide, Eric's Broad is our biggest shareholder at 18%. Uh, First Majestic Silver is a shareholder, uh, and generally some long resource, Canadian resource funds are shareholders as well. Okay, to switch gears and talk about the projects, the first one I'm going to talk about is the Maguillon project, a little bit of a strange pronunciation. This one's in New Mexico, named after one of the old governors going back, I think, to the 1700s. Uh, this is the most northerly of those famous Mexican vein fields, uh, except being in, in, in Mexico, it's in, it's in the U.S., in Mexico. Uh, so let's keep going. This slide here to introduce it a little bit more. I've got some cliches on the left there, you know, underexplored, unfinished business. You know, we have multiple targets. You know, we, every company here is going to say things like that. But I think for us, the best thing to introduce the project is to give you just a little bit of a history. So this is the largest silver producer in New Mexico historically. Something like 16 million ounces of silver and 340,000 ounces of gold came out of here uh, at grades of about 800 grams per ton silver equivalent. Uh, this was discovered in the 1880s by a, by a scout, a, a sergeant in the U.S. Cavalry, uh, that kept it secret for a couple years until he mustered out of the military, uh, and then went back up there and staked some claims uh, on his own and started a little mine with his brother. Uh, it produced between the 1880s and 1942, uh, and production only shut down here in 1942 because that's when the U.S. went into World War II. So that's when all silver and gold mining largely stopped in the U.S. by law. Uh, what we're doing now is we're evaluating uh, uh, two kilometers of strike, and I'll show you some, some maps and figures next. In total, there's 77 kilometers of cumulative strike of vein and perspective structure on this project with little or no modern exploration. Okay, so I'm just starting out with an underground side view, a long section here on that first two kilometers. This is the Queen Bane. Uh, on the right, um, what we're doing, what we've done over the past couple of years is, this is the surface. So this is going down to depth. These little dots are where our holes come through the screen. And it's a matter of what we've done so far, step out around this consolidated mine. So we've done that with 19 holes. Uh, results like 448 grams per ton silver equivalent over 31 meters. On this side, on the other side of that old mine, 640 grams per ton silver equivalent over 9.9 .9 meters, et cetera. And it's not rocket science here. Just stepping out around where we know there's mineralization. But if we start to zoom out from where we've drilled, you know, we have some data from some of the underground mines that are two kilometers along strike. So over here in the Clifton, you know, hundreds of grams per ton. In the Everly, thousands of grams per ton, up to 5,000 grams per ton in the Deadwood, thousands of grams per ton, and completely open underneath those and, and basically uh, largely unexplored. So what we're doing right now, and the drill is turning, 
just testing this very systematically and precisely, you know, where our work has shown that we think there's high potential for success. So we're going to have, we've got a hole completed here right now, one just completed there, uh, and I think we're going to leave the drill here for a little bit. But we're looking at uh, a, a, about another month of drilling with the idea of showing a scale to mineralization on this entire vein. You know, people, people say, okay, well, now it's time for you to show me. And so I say that to a lot of the things I invest in, and, and that's what the goal is here. Uh, okay, so now looking at an actual map of the project. The last section that we had was just this is the two kilometers. All of the rest of these red lines uh, are veins on the property that, again, have seen very little modern exploration. When we first started working on this project in 2020, 2021, uh, we didn't even have any surface data. So, you know, we didn't even have any samples from surface. We knew these, this great vein field was, looked like a good and that was probably there, but, you know, the first step that you think that you would do is go and sample all the veins at surface. So we went and did that, and, you know, lo and behold, we found that, you know, there's still lots of joy left remaining at surface here. So you can go and sample anywhere from hundreds of grams per ton to up to 8,000 grams per ton uh, right at surface. Uh, so lots of work to do going forward here. Like I was saying, we're drilling uh, over a strike length of about two kilometers and there's 77 kilometers of vein on the project. I was just there last week uh, and went and saw the vein exposures up on the northern part of the property right around here. Uh, and those vein extensions from where we're drilling down here, you know, they're up there. You can go look at them and they're very well developed, not explored. Okay, so switching gears to talk about the Hughes project. Uh, this one is in Tonopah, Nevada. It's the eastern half of the historic Tonopah Mining District. So we're working on the eastern half of the district, and our friends and colleague at Black Rock Silver, which Andrew's going to talk about shortly, are working on the western half of the district. District-wide produced about 175 million ounces of silver uh, and almost 1.9 million ounces of gold at grades of 1,230 grams per ton silver equivalent. Uh, for us, since getting started, some of our uh, highlight drill holes, uh, 3,900 grams per ton over 2.8 meters, 530 grams per ton over 18.1 meters, and 1,450 grams per ton silver equivalent over 3 meters, in a discovery of a new vein from just this past summer. Okay, that's too many numbers I'm throwing at everybody. Big picture, over a trend length of about 6.5 kilometers, we've drilled multiple zones exceeding 1,000 grams per ton silver equivalent, and now need to wrap our arms and start to really define what could be left uh, in our portion of this old district. Uh, map of the project, uh, these are our different target zones that we've drilled. The two targets on the left, Murray and Belmont, uh, those are in the historic part of the district where we're chasing things that the old timers didn't get to. Uh, extensions of veins, parallel structures that weren't mined. Uh, so that's good, that's where we've had done the most of our work, that's where we've had the most of our success. But the, uh, that's, so that's half the story. The other half of the story is moving to the east. The rest of these targets are pure exploration targets where we're looking for an extension of the entire district. And what happened was the veins running east-west ran into a fault zone right here called the Halifax Fault. And the old time miners more or less lost the veins on the far side of that fault. But there's really no reason why they, they shouldn't continue. So this is just again a, a nice schematic underground side view, a long section. This is surface. These, these points are all of our drill holes where we've hit and drilled out some nice mineralization in the historic part of the district. This is the Halifax Fault. Now east of that and from an exploration perspective, we've also drilled six holes there. All of them have hit silver mineralization to some degree. Three new discoveries this summer in separate veins. 1450 grams per ton silver equivalent over three meters, 392 over three meters, uh, and then 376 grams per ton over uh, 1.5 meters. That's about a four kilometer step out from the district. So the big picture question is here, if this area to the left of the fault produced 175 million ounces of silver, how much is hiding out here? All six of our holes have hit so far, so it's just a matter of continuing our work and looking for the big veins. Again, this, this helps put, put that in perspective a little more. How does Tonopah compare to some of the famous Mexican districts that the Spanish have been mining going back 500 years and likely indigenous people before that? Well, you take Tonopah, produced over a strike length of four kilometers and that many ounces. We'll compare that to the Wanuatos, the Sandy Masses, or the Pachucas of the world. More strike length and many more ounces. That just makes sense intuitively. Well, I'm just representing that mine strike length with the length of this white bar here for Tonopah. So take Tonopah at four kilometers. 
add one and a half kilometers onto it where we're starting to hit at a zone called Ruby, add another 2.7 kilometers onto that where we're starting to hit at a zone called Sapphire, and it fits in quite nicely with how big these districts can get when they get to be truly world class. So that was that realization that when I first started working on this company, uh, I went down to Tonopah and staked the claims that are the extension myself. Now you'd never be able to do that today because it's lithium central there and everything's staked up, but you know, our timing was lucky. Uh, and you know what, I'm, and I'm just gonna, just gonna end it here. I see I'm out of time uh, with the opportunity. I mean, I mean, for us, it's, I think it's pretty simple. If you're in, interested in investing in silver, generally silver companies are, are much more rare than our gold cousins. Uh, high grade silver opportunities are even more rare. Uh, and, and these same opportunities in places like the US, you know, there's very, very few companies to invest in. So uh, if you're interested in silver, uh, I'd say please consider uh, owning Suma Silver if you don't already. Uh, okay, thanks very much for your time.